book review time. Not really a review, but just me raving about it, to be honest. Douglas Self, Small Signal Audio Design. This is a great book, regardless of if you're into valve stuff or not, because it goes into filters and all sorts of stuff. Uh, so, Small Signal Audio Design. Learn how to make amplifiers with, with apparently impossibly low noise. Design discrete cir circuitry that can handle enormous signals and vanishingly low distortion. Use ordinary bipolar transistors to make amplifiers with an impedance of more than 50 mega ohms. Transform the performance of low-cost op amps and how to make filters with very low noise and distortion. Uh, make incredibly accurate volume controls. There you go. Someone was asking about that one. Make a huge variety of audio equalizers. Make magnetic cartridge preamplifiers that have low noise. So low it's limited by basic physics. <laughs> Sum, switch, clip, compress, and route audio signals effectively. Build reliable power supplies with many practical ways to keep both noise and cost down. Much enlarged second edition is packed with new information, including completely new chapters on op amps for low voltages down to 3.3 volts, moving magnet inputs, archival and non-standard equalization for 78s, etc. Moving magnet inputs, discrete transistor circuitry, moving magnet inputs, noise and distortion, balance and width controls, headphone amplifiers, including Class A designs. So looking at the contents, because that's where, it, where the magic is. Can you see that one? Yeah, you can read that. Um, basics. So it runs you through all the different topologies, uh, different sources of noise, uh, which is good to know. Uh components runs you through the all the things to watch out for things like pcb considerations which is fucking liquid gold well it's just liquid gold it's, it's gold that's <laughs> what i'm telling you <laughs> thinking about beer again um different considerations of each type of resistor too like literally goes into through hole resistors surface mount resistors um like different form factors and how they influence your your design and the uh the factors to be aware of Discrete transistor stuff, which scares a lot of people. And I think the main reason that transistors scare people a bit is because they're a three-terminal device. Like op-amps, you can understand. You've got your voltage supply plus minus. You've got your inputs and your outputs. Even they get a bit sketchy when you ask people, like, what's the difference between the two inputs? You know, what 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 are the golden rules? Uh, <clears throat> but with transistors, um, it's good to know when you look at a circuit Oh, that's a one transistor shunt feedback gain stage, right? And you can you can just say, okay, that's what it is. So this is what I should be seeing here. This is the voltages I should expect. Uh, why am I not getting that? Okay, well, the transistor's fucked. 90% of the time, that's what it is. But it's good to know uh, at a glance what each little building block that makes up the whole circuit is and what it's supposed to be doing. And then it's like learning a language, right? Eventually, you can read the whole sentence, which is the circuit or that segment of the circuit instead of looking at a bunch of individual letters and getting confused so just uh on the on the uh name again small signal audio design second edition from douglas self um he's got a fucking ton of books um this is like the the master uh he's got i think you can get individual um or more specialized where he digs down into each chapter you can get books just on filters that he does he's got lots of white papers and stuff too i think some of it publicly available a very smart man and he's got a good sense of humor you read this and it's like talking to a person it's not like some abstract fucking lab coat nerd he's a funny bloke he jokes around in the text it's like uh art of electronics you know they they joke around they're they're personable people and they've got a sense of humor what i was looking at today one thing which is often a little bit confusing like what what op amp do i choose like there's so many and like what are the differences what what's the pros and cons why would i choose a tl072 over a uh opa27 um we actually digs into that and makes it pretty pretty easy and efficient and there's a lot of um there's a little bit of history there, but there's another article which I think I offered a while back from uh, from our man um, uh, uh, Rod Elliott, who digs into the history of op amps and why why they came out with the next version essentially because the previous one had this shortcoming or this this was a problem so the next one addressed that and then the one after that addressed the other shortcoming that they couldn't figure out at the time blah blah blah. Um, but yeah, just knowing you know what why choose a NE five five three two. You know, what, when I could use a LM4562. Well, for starters, LM4562 is 10 times the cost, but 
is it worth it? And is my application, uh, well, you know, is it going to show an improvement using the more expensive one or do I just use an NE5532? Because they're everywhere. Goes into filters, all the different forms of filters, um, which is great. Filters, people think of just high and low pass, but it's got notch, band pass, uh, goes into the different. So that's just your basic filters. But then later on, it goes into uh, tone controls and equalizers. So yeah, you've learned about the filters earlier on, but later on it goes into this is how they're actually implemented the back sandal tone stack, etc., etc. Uh, three band EQs. A lot of this tends to be a bit more aimed towards like professional audio gear or um, like mastering equipment and high end hi fi rather than like guitar amps. But you recognize, because a lot of the guitar amp stuff just came from early hi fi designs basically and then just stayed there whereas the hi fi stuff advanced over the years. Uh, so, volume controls look, there's a whole chapter on just, just volume controls, you know, it's not just a fucking potentiometer. Step volume attenuators, you know, relay switch volume controls, which I've seen in uh, in NAD had a big bank of relays, and and um, that's how it's as you turn the volume control, you can hear the relays clicking, uh, and they're all mercury wetted contacts and stuff. Balance controls, there's a whole chapter on that. Great if you're getting into the hi-fi repair game. Is it a game? I don't know, hobby I should say. Preamplifier architectures, passive preamplifiers, uh, which is a bit of a contradiction. <laughs> um, but a lot of stuff uh, involving vinyl, so RI, AA equalization, the different preamps, the different EQ curves. Uh, so he digs right down into the, the vinyl stuff. But then later on, mixer architectures, microphone preamplifiers. So that's more into the Pro Audio stuff. Line inputs, look at the chapter on line inputs. Look at it. Look at it. And line outputs. Headphone amps. Signal switching. Just basics like that, which comes into play with channel switching amps and stuff. Mix of subsystems. How, like, uh, PFL buttons and how they work. And, yeah. Amazing book. Level indication metering. There's a whole chapter on, you know, vacuum fluorescent displays, plasma displays, the different technologies used to show the levels. Um, and then it gets into like power supply, uh, level control, so compressors and limiters, clipping, reasons f that you would in implement clipping, not, not so much tone thing, but, but like level limiting, uh, power supplies, and interfacing with, it starts to touch on the digital stuff here, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's, I think, for another, another book, but, um, they use the audio, audio precision system for all their uh, measurements, which would be a lovely thing to have. <clears throat> yeah, fantastic. It's not super cheap, but it wasn't stupid expensive either. I think this was one of the ones where you order it and they literally print your single copy and then ship it out to you. Sort of like, I forget the name for it, on, on demand, whatever. Yeah, get yourself a copy of that if you can. <laughs> 